What's up guys, Justin here with the Rhino Essentials. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how you can place and resize textures on your objects in Rhino. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so if you've ever applied materials in Rhino, you know that they sometimes come in at a size that you don't necessarily want. Well, in this video, we're gonna talk about how to fix that. So let's start off by applying a material to this cube that I've created in Rhino. So what we wanna do is we wanna select the object and we just want to jump over into the materials tab right here. We wanna go ahead and we wanna add a material to the model. That's gonna allow us to apply this to this object. In this case, we'll just use the Rhino material library. Usually I just pick one of these wood materials because um, they're kind of a good start. So let's go with maybe the, let's go with a polished elm material. So I'm just gonna double click. That's gonna bring that into this list right here. Well then you can either right click on it and click on assign to object or you can drag it directly onto this object. Assuming you wanna apply it to the object and not to a layer, which we're gonna assume that we wanna do in this video. So what we've got now is we've got this wood material that's applied to this object. And overall it looks pretty good, but let's say that we wanted to adjust maybe the size of the material. Right, And so this is where people get confused because they scroll down and they start looking in here for an option to resize the material. So Rhino, does, Rhino doesn't actually manage the texture image files in this way. Instead, the textures are managed in a different tab. So to get to those textures, you're gonna wanna right click in here and you're gonna want to enable the textures window or the textures tab right here. Well then what you can do is you can go from over here and you want to click on the button for textures right here. And so once you get to textures, basically what you're doing in this situation is you're starting to adjust the mapping of the actual two dimensional image that's being applied to this object. So what we wanna do is we wanna select this object, right? Which is our Elm red material. We wanna scroll down and notice how there's a tab in here for mapping. And so inside of mapping, there's different options in here that are gonna allow you to adjust the way that the materials sit on this object. So right now, for example, this material file is being placed on the object or mapped on it using the WCS slash OCS box style. We're gonna leave that for right now and we're just gonna adjust this little button right here for mapping. So let's say I wanted my material to be a different size. Like let's say we typed in a value of six inches and hit the enter key. Well, notice what happened is that texture in here got bigger. So instead of three inches, it's now six inches. If I typed in another value, so let's call it 12 inches right here, notice how that got even bigger. If I was to go the other direction and say like one inch, notice how that texture gets smaller and it's tiling more on this object. So you can use this to really kind of dial in your texture sizes on your objects inside of Rhino. And so let's talk a little bit about the way the texture actually sits on this object. We're not gonna get way in depth on mapping in this video, we can do that in another video. But for right now, let's just take a look at a couple of our options. All right, so each one of these is going to try to map your materials in a different way. And sometimes these come in here with a different repeat. So you wanna adjust these, but notice how, for example, if you use the automatic environment map, it's going to try to map these on a surface in a certain way. Um, each one of these is going to have a different situation where you might use it. So the screen, for example, notice how that's basically taking the material and it's um, basically overlaying it on the screen and then just having it drop onto your object based on your viewport or your viewpoint. So there are situations where you're gonna use all of these. For the most part, we are going to use probably the box style as well as this last option right here. Um, so the box style is the one we started off with that's going to basically use a box shape in order to place this on this object. So in a lot of situations, the box style is going to be enough um, to get you the result that you want, especially for simpler shapes like this. However, sometimes you want a little bit more control over the way that the materials are mapped. And so what you can do if you wanna do that is you can actually create your own UV maps in here. And I'm gonna change this to maybe like two for right now. But notice how when I click on this, it's telling me that it's checking a mapping channel of one. Well, what I wanna do is I wanna create my own UV map for this object. And so to do that, I'm just gonna go back into my properties. Notice how there's a tool in here for texture mapping. That has a number of different tools in here for different kinds of mapping. We're not gonna get way in depth on all of those right now. We're gonna use a simple one called box mapping. And so what that's gonna do is notice how that's gonna ask us for a bounding box. So basically we're gonna draw a box in here and the box in the 3D space is going to adjust how this is applied to your object. 
So for now, I'm gonna start with this corner and I'm gonna draw a corner for this base. And then I'm gonna draw a corner right here. Um, it's gonna ask if we want this to be capped and we're gonna say yes. And we're gonna hit the enter key and there we go. What that's done is that's created a UV map for the object that we had selected and it placed it in the one slot. Well, what that means is that means that now there's actually a tool in here called the mapping widget. So you can come in here and you can select the option for mapping widget. And it's gonna ask us to select an object right here, which is this object, and we're gonna hit the inner key. And it's going to ask us for the mapping channel. In this case, we're looking at one. We're gonna hit the inner key. Well, notice what that does is that created this box in here that we can edit inside a Rhino. Well, the cool thing about the box is it's basically a widget or a tool that we can use in here in order to adjust the size and location of this material. So notice how, for example, if I come in here and move this up and down, that material location is going to be moved based on that widget location right here. And so I'm gonna to toggle the gumball on and off really quick. And notice how this is in here as a 3D object. So if I click on this, if I wanted to adjust the object itself, I would select the extrusion, right? Or if I click on this and I select the option for mapping widget, that's gonna allow me to adjust this. And so not only can I move this up, down, left and right, like this, I can also use the other tools in the mapping widget to adjust this material. So for example, Notice how if I click and drag the scale function right here, it's adjusting the way that the material is tiling on this one surface right here. If I hold the shift key and I scale the whole thing in or out, notice how that's gonna allow me to really quickly adjust the size of the material in here. So I can use the directions in order to adjust how it sits on these different surfaces, right? So I can adjust these like this. The other thing you can do when you select this box is you can also use this to rotate your materials. So if I click in here, and we'll click and drag, right? Notice how this is adjusting the way this material is applied to this object based on the way I adjust the orientation of this box right here. So you do wanna be a little bit careful because notice how you can get some weird results if you adjust that box like this, but this is a really easy way using the mapping widget in order to quickly adjust how your materials are placed on your object inside of the 3D space. And then whenever you wanna turn that off, you can just uh, do a mapping widget off in order to hide that so it's not gonna show up in here anymore. So that's some quick, easy way to adjust easy ways to adjust material sizes inside of Rhino. All right, so leave a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions about anything we talked about or what you'd like to see about materials in the future. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.